warrior, competitor, conqueror. He was an 11-time NHL All-Star, 3-time Vesna winner, 3-time Conn Smythe Trophy recipient, and 4-time Stanley Cup champion. One of the most decorated goalies in the history of the game, his butterfly technique revolutionized the goalie position for decades to come. Composed between the pipes, but not so much outside of it, he'd waste no time to give others a piece of his mind and his fists. Bring it on, bring them all on. Standing at 6 foot 2, 190 pounds, he's arrogant, flamboyant, number 33, St. Patrick, Patrick Waugh. Patrick Jacques Waugh was born on October 5th, 1965 in Quebec City, Quebec, Canada. Young Patrick started playing goalie at the age of 7 and after watching his idol Rogi Vachon play live, he knew he had found his passion. At the age of 16, Patrick Waugh would play for the local team, the St. Foy Governors, where he posted an insane record of 27 wins, 3 losses, and 10 ties. He would move on to the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, playing for the Granby Bisons just a year later. But despite his unexceptional stats, he would be drafted in the 1984 NHL Entry Draft in the third round, 51st overall, by the Montreal Canadiens. Waugh would return to Granby for his draft plus one season, but he would later be called up to the Canadians straight from his junior team on an emergency basis, serving what he thought was a backup role. But he would come in relief in the third period, going on to allow no goals as he earned his first NHL win. After the game, Waugh was assigned to the Canadians AHL team, the Sherbrooke Canadians, as he was expected to serve as the backup once again until the starter had equipment problems and Waugh got the opportunity to start. He would end up winning the game and he would be chosen as a starter for the playoffs as he led the team to the Calder Cup Championship with a 10-3 record. The following season of 1985-86 saw Waugh start as the backup once again, this time for the Montreal Canadiens. But once again, an injury to starting goalie Steve Penny meant Waugh, a rookie, would be taking over as the starter. Waugh would go on to impress and become the starter in the playoffs at the tender age of 20, as he would lead his team to an unlikely Stanley Cup triumph. Waugh's spectacular 193 goals against average and 923 save percentage would earn him the Conn Smythe Trophy as the most valuable player in the playoffs. He would also capture the Calder Trophy as the Rookie of the Year. Patrick Waugh had become a household name, and he was just getting started. He was competitive, as his opponents knew they were in for a grueling battle every time they stepped on the ice against him. He was aggressive, as he not only challenged the shooter during the play, but also after it. He had a no-nonsense type of attitude, as once you got on his naughty list, there was no way he was gonna let it slide. But perhaps most admirably, he was a pioneer for goalies. He would perfect and popularize the butterfly style of goaltending, as it would lay the foundations for modern goaltending, which allows goalies to cover as much of the net as possible and to be in a good position to react to the rebound. Waugh would go on to win the Vesna Trophy as the best goalie three times within a four-year span in 1989, 90, and 92. But it was during the 1993 Stanley Cup playoffs in which he would again go down in history, establishing himself as a big-time clutch playoff performer as he backstopped his team to 10 straight overtime victories, propelling them to Stanley Cup glory yet again. He was awarded his second Conn Smythe Trophy, and to get a sense of how heavily his team relied on him, the Canadians didn't have a single player who finished in the top 20 in scoring that year. Patrick Waugh had reached legendary status in Montreal, and it seemed like the superstar goalie was going to bring the storied franchise back to the dominance of years past. But on that fateful day on December 2nd, 1995, in a game that will forever go down in infamy, he would play his last game for the Montreal Canadiens. Earlier in the year, the Canadiens had hired Mario Tremblay as head coach, and he and Wa were like oil and water. They did not mix very well. 
It all started when Wa was a rookie on the team and Tremblay, who was a veteran, had made fun of his English. So there was already a certain animosity between them. Coupled with the fact that the coach intentionally fired a puck at Wa's mask in practice and denied him access to the trainer's room unless he was injured, it seemed like Tremblay was determined to secure his power within the dressing room. And this leads us to that game against Detroit in which Wa got humiliated with 9 goals against and was sarcastically cheered upon making easy saves by the Montreal crowd before Tremblay would pull the poor goalie. As he left the ice, that cold stare from Tremblay had confirmed his intentions and Wa walked up to team president Ronald Corey to announce that he will not be playing another game for Montreal. Just a few days later, Wa would be traded to the Colorado Avalanche along with Captain Mike Keane. Even though Jocelyn Thibault, Martin Ruchinski and Andre Kovalenko would turn out to be pretty good hockey players, the mere acquisition of Patrick Wa, who had piggybacked the Canadians to two Stanley Cups, was seen as a poor trade for the Habs at the time. And time did not make it any better. The Avalanche had just relocated to Colorado in the previous offseason, and they had a star-studded lineup that had only one perceived weakness, goalie. And Patrick Wa's arrival not only solidified the position, but his confidence and self-belief would seep into the depths of the entire team. Wa would backstop the Avalanche to the Stanley Cup that year in 1996, and if it wasn't for the unreal production by Joe Sackick, Wa would have captured his third Conn Smythe trophy. By 1997, the rivalry between the Avalanche and the Red Wings had reached a point of no return. From the hit on Adam Foote to the hit on Chris Draper, the two teams absolutely hated each other and on March 26, 1997, when the epic brawl broke out, Wa was front and center as he not only went to the aid of his teammate, but would also square off against Mike Vernon. And in just the very next season, Wa would not so politely invite Chris Osgood to a fight as well. In 2002, Wa would challenge Dominic Hasek to a fight. I don't think he liked the Red Wings very much. Patrick Wa would lead the Colorado Avalanche to another championship in 2001, his fourth, and his brilliant stand on his head type of performances earned him an unprecedented third Conn Smythe trophy as playoff MVP. Patrick Wa would retire in 2003 as he ended his remarkable career with a plethora of awards and records. With him as the starter, he only missed the playoffs once in his career and he would prove to be a key member of his team's deep playoff runs. He's registered 151 playoff wins as a goalie and I don't think anyone's touching that record. He's also won the Jennings Trophy on five separate occasions, being a part of the goalie tandem who's allowed the least amount of goals in a season. Patrick Waugh would have his number 33 retired by the Colorado Avalanche and the Montreal Canadiens, and for his contributions to the game of hockey, he would also be inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame Class of 2006, rightfully receiving the game's highest honor. Patrick Waugh would venture into coaching in 2005 as he led the Quebec Rampart to the Memorial Cup Championship. His teams would continue to have impressive seasons under his tutelage, and he would later be hired as the Colorado Avalanche's head coach in 2013, returning to the place where he's revered as the hockey great that he is. In his first season with the Avs, he would coach the team to 52 wins, and even though they'd be bounced in the first round, Wa's willingness to pull his goalie early in search of an equalizer had set the stage for other coaches to follow suit. Wa would win the Jack Adams Trophy that season as the best coach, but he would fail to make the playoffs in each of the next couple of seasons, ultimately stepping down as head coach. Patrick Wall will be remembered for his fiery, arrogant style of play. In the 1993 playoffs, the Nordiques had jumped out to a 2-0 series lead and they claimed they had solved Patrick Waugh. Challenge accepted, and Waugh would lead the Canadians to four straight wins to take the series. In round two of the 1996 playoffs, Patrick Waugh got into a war of words with Jeremy Roenick which led to Wa simply saying he couldn't hear JR because he's got two Stanley Cup rings plugged in his ear. 
The list goes on and on. Like the time he winked at Thomas Sandstrom after stoning him all game long in the Stanley Cup Finals. Or the time he deked past Gretzky and received a penalty for crossing the center line. Sometimes his overconfidence would get the better of him. Like the time in 2002 in that crucial Game 6 against the Red Wings. He had made some spectacular saves and he thought he had the puck in his glove. And he's done it a million times before, raising that glove for the cameras, but this time the puck dropped out, leading to the embarrassing moment. Patrick was arrogance was what led him to be great. He was so proud, so competitive, he was always going to strive for his best, and that intensity was what showed on the outside. Even if it was way overboard, and even if he made a fool out of himself at times, it comes with the territory, and it's with this in which we should all learn from Patrick Waugh. Just like Waugh, you should always stand up for what you believe in. Obviously, don't go overboard like he did, but you should strive to have self-belief. Waugh believed he was superior to others, and this belief allowed him to reach a standard that was only matched by a select few in the history of the sport. If you can achieve this level of self-belief while channeling the arrogant part out, the sky's the limit for you. Thanks for watching. Bye.